fellow scratchers. Text is a huge part of games and apps, and if we've got something to say, we might as well do so in style. Check out these cool text effects. Yeah, so which do you prefer? These babies? Or Scratch's built-in speech bubbles and variable reporters? Yeah, it's no contest. What you need is a Scratch text engine. And what exactly is that? Well, basically, it's a Scratch sprite, absolutely chock full of costumes. Wow, so many. Throw in a few clever Scratch scripts and boom, super cool text. But text engines are well known for being time consuming and tricky to get right. Well then you've come to the right place, because I've spent literally days on your behalf trying to make the best tutorial I could. So stay tuned to find out how we're going to import your dream font, the fastest approach to splitting costumes, clever tricks to measure costume sizes, and of course the awesome text engine itself. There'll be no stopping us then. Just look what I've been building with it. Yeah! Are you excited? I certainly am. So what are we waiting for? Let's get scratching! So where do we get these awesome fonts from? Well there's plenty of options, and I'll present you with my top four. You probably know that Scratch has six fonts built into its costume editor. Option one then is to use one of these as the basis for your font engine, and it sure is the quickest and easiest font to import. For option two, we must go searching for font sprite sheets. These are downloadable pictures showing a complete set of font letters. Really great if you are after a retro pixel art style. Option three is to import a Google font. But wow, there are so many to choose from, simply thousands of amazing fonts. It's just that we need to jump through a few more hoops before we can get these into Scratch. Which leads me to option four. Remix a font project from my Scratch font studio. After all, the more of us that spend the time preparing these fonts, the more that will be available. You'll find a link to the studio in the description under this video. Of course, there's nothing like having a go yourself, so without further ado, let me take you through each option as quickly as I can. Starting with the easiest option, the native Scratch fonts then. Make sure to create a new sprite, naming it Font. So we have these six typefaces to choose from, and I'm going to choose the Sans Serif font, the top one. Hey, did you know that a serif refers to the little lines found on the edges of letters? And sans means without, so sans serif means without serifs, these little lines. Ha! Now, before we start splitting up the letters, we should make sure we have decided on the colour and the size our font is going to be. Changing your mind later will mean a lot of hard work. If you aren't sure at this point, then you could always just stick with the default size. Check out how it looks on full screen too. And off we go! Change the text to be a single uppercase letter A. Then without resizing it, drag the A carefully to the centre of the drawing canvas, marked here by a small crosshair. And if we zoom right in, really close, so we can be super accurate in our positioning, drag the A so that the bottom left corner of the letter ends on the central crosshair. You'll note the bounding box of the A actually goes below this point. Ignore that for now, it's the baseline of the letter A that we are concerned about. Cool. So with the A positioned, we can change its name to be a capital A too. Perfect. That one's done. So on to the next. Duplicate the costume, and with the text tool, change the A into a B, and consequently rename the costume to also be called. B. Right, are you getting the picture? Duplicate the costume, change the letter, change the costume name to match, and repeat. Over and over and over. Finally, we reach Z, and we can pause for breath before beginning work on the lowercase letters, starting again at lowercase a. And this is an interesting fact that Scratch costume names are one of the few places that are case sensitive. So we can have one costume named lowercase a and another costume named uppercase a. Lucky that, because otherwise this text engine wouldn't work. Right, that's all 26 times 2, 52 letters out of the way. We can start on the numbers. Ha <laughs> ha, only 10 of those from 0 to 9. Name them after the numbers, of course. And then phew, this really is a marathon. 
you can decide what other punctuation and symbols to include. You know, full stops, commas, quotes, underscores. I'm just going to do them all, starting at the top left of my British keyboard and working my way across it. It always surprises me just how many symbols there are. Whew, 91 costumes. Wowzers. Okay, so do let me just say, this all takes quite a bit of time, so you may want to add just a few letters to begin with, and then get on with the rest of the tutorial. The great thing about this engine is that you can go back and add more letters at any point. Even the order you add them is completely unimportant. This way, you can test whether you like the look of the font well before you've added more than a dozen letters. Worth remembering. Ok, cool, we have completed adding a built-in scratch font. Good job! And yes, that was the easy one. Are you ready for option 2? Using a font sprite sheet image. This is the approach I tend to use if I want a cool retro looking font. I googled font sprite sheet, and there are plenty of possibilities. This one looks nice, see how all the letters are laid out in a grid? The actual image size is really small, but don't worry, it's good news for us, as that will make it easy to import into Scratch. Just save any prospective images to your computer ready to bring into Scratch. I note this font doesn't have any lowercase letters though. Another resource I found is Caveras.net. It's packed with a whole bunch of super retro fonts based on classic games. I clicked through a few and rather fancied the look of this Reactor 7 font. I'm going to download this image of the typeface, saving it to my computer. But checking in File Explorer, I'm afraid we are going to have a problem importing this image into Scratch because it's wider than 480 pixels, which is the width of the Scratch stage. Oh man, so there's loads of workarounds to this. The upshot is that we need to edit the image to make it smaller. One option would be to hop on over to the EasyGIF, ezgif.com site, and make use of their handy crop tool. We can upload the picture with it we just downloaded, and then set the crop size to be exactly 480 by 360. Don't forget to click Set, and then make sure the crop is left aligned. Then scroll down and click Crop Image. Ok, so here's the result. We're just lucky that there are no important letters on the right hand region of this image that we cropped off, otherwise we'd have to make a second crop to get those into Scratch 2. So hit save, and I'll make sure to add the words cropped to the file name. Splendid! And now we return home to Scratch. I'm starting over here with a blank font sprite to show you how this is done. In the costume editor, click to upload a new costume. And first I'll show you that fun bubble font. <laughs> nice, that would work super well I think. It's a mono space font too. Anyhow, I'm not going to use that one right now. Let me show you what happens if we try to load the font image that was too big for Scratch. So, to begin with Scratch loaded at double resolution, so it appears super tiny. This wouldn't be a problem at all if Scratch didn't also decide to chop off the top of our image. Man, that is annoying. Oh well, that's why I had us make the cropped version. Load that up instead. And ah, that's much better. The size is retained, and so is the top line. Yeah! So, this font is a little small at this size. But once we cut out the individual characters, we can set the sprite size to 200% and it will look just great. But what? We need to cut out each and every character? By hand? Yes, I'm sorry, that is the bad news. But don't rage quit right yet, there's also some good news. This particular sprite sheet is very bloated and we only need to use these first two rows. That is good news. But also, I have done a lot of sprite sheet cutting and I have a rather sick workflow that you might like to follow. Are you ready for this? Fasten your seatbelts and off we go! Start by making a duplicate of the entire font sheet, just in case something goes wrong. Click back up into the original sheet. Next, name the sheet A to Z. Then, using the rectangular selection tool, I next am going to select and delete everything but the first line of this image. 
I'll just double check I didn't accidentally remove too much or too little. Don't forget that we can always click undo if we make a mistake. Great, so next I'll select all by pressing Ctrl and the A key. And drag the image to snap it to the centre of the canvas. You know how to snap it there, right? If we zoom right in on the centre point now, still with the whole costume selected, if it's not then just press Ctrl A again, we can carefully drag the costume upwards until it sits with the baseline of the font on the midpoint of the canvas. I find it helpful to hold the shift key down while dragging to stop it from moving left or right. Just make sure it's perfectly aligned before you click off the selection. One more tweak though before we really begin cutting them up. See how this letter to the right of the baseline is not aligned to the background grid. That will result in a blurry font. So select all again with Ctrl A and while holding shift drag it all half a pixel to the left. Perfecto! And now we get to the really laborious and crazily repetitive part of this video. Separating the letters into individual costumes. Come on, scroll over to the far right and find the last letter in the row. Mine is the lowercase z, but yours could be any letter, depending on your chosen sprite sheet. Before we start, it's a good plan to duplicate the A to Z costume. Guys, soon you'll know these nine steps so well that you'll be babbling them in your sleep. Step one, select the original A to Z costume. Step two, with the rectangle selection tool, drag around the last letter to select it. And only it, nothing else. Step three, click copy. Step four, click delete. Yeah, basically we just cut out the Z from the costume and it's now safely in the computer's clipboard ready for pasting. Step five, duplicate the costume, staying with the duplicate. Step six, click delete. This is the fastest way to get a new costume right where we are in the list of costumes. Step seven, and now we click paste. Aha, there is our letter, nice one. Step eight, so name the costume lowercase z to match. And step nine, careful, this is the easiest step to miss, and I frequently did, Click on the costume canvas once. Why? If you don't, then Scratch doesn't save the new costume that we pasted, and we lose that pasted letter. Is that a bug? Yes it is, and it only happens in bitmap mode. But hold the phone! Isn't it a problem that our letter is left positioned way over here to the right of the costume canvas? Ah well, there's a thing. We have a choice here. Under normal circumstances, another step in this process would be to carefully move the costume back and align it perfectly to the centre of the costume. However, this step adds more time to our processing than all the other actions combined, and it just so happens I have a little bit of griff patch magic that is going to allow us to ignore this step completely. Wow, I wonder what it could be. Right though, back to step one. Select the original A to Z costume. Two, drag around the last letter. Three, copy. Four, delete. Five, duplicate the costume. Six, delete. Seven, paste. Eight, name the costume lowercase y. Nine, and click the canvas. Again, select A to Z, drag around the letter. Copy, delete. Duplicate the costume, delete, paste. Name the costume and click on the canvas. Of course, by the time you've done this a few hundred times like me, you too might be driven slightly around the bend, but at least you'll be a master of cutting out costumes. Oh my, there's nothing like having the end in sight. And phew, we made it! The last letter in the row doesn't need copying or deleting, we just name it A. And it's done. Oh, after finishing a row, we can just check down to ensure everything looks good. Oh no, what? Where is our capital R? <laughs> you see, I told you we all make mistakes. I mustn't have clicked on the costume after renaming it. Well, no problem, as long as we made that duplicate of the A to Z costume, it's down at the bottom here. All I need to do is find the letter R, select and copy it, and then scroll back up to find the R costume and we just tap paste. 
And phew wee, that saved our bacon. And all the other letters are accounted for. Nice. So, are we done? Come back to the original font sheet. Ah, uh, no, we still have the numbers and punctuation symbols to split up. In times like this, you just gotta pretend you're a robot and go into autopilot, right? Okay, select and delete the top row. They at least are all done. And then carefully remove everything below the second line. If you make a mistake, you can always click undo or re-import the original picture. And then trim off any characters you really don't need. That cuts it down a tad. So do you remember what we need to do next? Yeah, we align the baseline of the letters to the middle of the canvas, position the costume with its baseline just sitting on the central line. And lastly, before we start splitting again, oh joy, we need to just nudge the entire line over so that the pixels align with the editor grid. There, that's perfect, and we are ready to roll. Wish me Godspeed. The nine steps to costume happiness. More like the nine steps to griff patch madness. Woohoo! And we are done. Yes, yes, I'm so psyched. Oh man, wow, what a ride. Seriously, who would do this? We must be so dedicated to Scratch. Now I'm obviously a glutton for punishment because there's a third source of fonts I'm going to let you in on. The good news is that the splitting process is all but identical to the bitmap one, so we can skip over that a lot. The third source is Google Fonts, found by visiting fonts.google.com. And wow, there are so many just amazing fonts on there. Thank you Google for this outstanding resource. But how do we get them into Scratch? So let's choose Google's very own Roboto font. Now there's many ways that you might get this into Scratch, but let me show you my current favourite. If I search up the page Google Font to SVG Path, then that will bring us to a website of the same name. A link is of course in the description under the video. This site is able to take a font and convert it into an SVG, a vector image. So simply find Roboto in the list of fonts, so we don't need to upload anything. Set the font weight, regular will do. Now the default size is rather large, let's go with a size of 20. Next click on separate characters. That will help us split up the font later on. We must remember to set the stroke width to zero, otherwise the font will have an extra outline. Finally, we write in the text box the letters we want to convert. Start with all the uppercase letters from A to Z, and then click download SVG. The file will save with the name ABC etc, and that's fine with me. Next up, we write the lower, ahem, the lowercase letters, silly caps lock. Again, we download the SVG, but just be careful not to save over the previous file. Lastly, we want the numbers and any punctuation and characters, full stops, commas, underscores, brackets, all those. When you download this one, you'll probably need to change the file name to get it to save successfully. Great, we can spin up Scratch with a once more empty font sprite and upload the first SVG font image. Nice, at size 100 it looks pretty sweet. And now the process of splitting this up is going to be all but identical to the nine step system we used for splitting up the bitmap font. We begin by zooming in because we need to adjust the text baseline. Now all these letters are separate from each other, that's going to be useful later. But right now, select all using Control A, and then drag carefully upwards onto the midpoint line. Trying to line letters up horizontally is actually rather pointless in vector mode, so you might as well skip this action. Anyhow, with that done, all we need to do is follow the same nine step routine from the bitmap font. So we start by duplicating the costume, just for safety's sake, and off we go. Just this one time, I promise. Select the original costume. 2. Click on the last letter. 3. Copy. 4. Delete. 5. Duplicate the costume. 6. Delete. 7. Paste. 8. Name the costume uppercase Z. And 9. Actually in vector mode, you don't even need to click on the canvas, so I guess it's only an 8 step process. Nice! And that is it. Repeat, repeat, repeat! Do you have any idea how long I spent recording this episode for you? If you want to take a stab in the comments under this video, then have a laugh. Yeah, the things I do for you guys. Once you've done all the uppercase letters, 
we then upload the lowercase, work through them, and then the numbers and punctuation. There sure is a lot of them, but in the end, we are done. If you made it this far, then fantastic, because this next bit is quite fun. Because we finally get to do some coding, yay! Although we have our font costumes all separated out, we don't yet know how wide each costume is, and we will need that before we can actually place letters next to each other. Now, it's common practice to create a list for these widths, and manually go through each costume recording these widths into that. Yes, we could do that, but what if we could calculate the widths automatically? That would sure save time. Any idea how we might do that? If you don't know already, then see if you can guess before I finish explaining this clever scratch trick. We start with the bitmap font Sprite. I'm only sizing it to 800 so that you could see it in this video. But ah, where is that sprite when we need it? Ah, <laughs> there it is. Scratch has fenced it into view, ensuring it never goes fully off screen. This is a real pain for making scrolling games, but right now, I guess we can see the logic in it. But this fencing does have another use. Watch this. Bring in a set X block. Uh, hey, what? <laughs> Such a tiny block. Oh, hold on. Yeah, set this sprite X's position to negative. 9999. Nine, nine, nine. And of course, rather than going way off screen to the left, the sprite is fenced in and is just visible on the left margin. So next up, we'll repeat until we are not touching the edge of the screen, while slowly moving it back to the right with a change x by 1. Run that, and the letter slides expectantly into view. Cool, because if we can align a costume to the left edge of the screen, then moving the costume half a screen width to the right, change x by 240, that will end with the sprite aligned from the midpoint of the canvas. Haha, <laughs> that doesn't tell us how wide the costume is, but it does do something else. Remember how when splitting up these costumes we skipped the step where we brought them back to the centre? Well look, now we've managed to adjust the position in code to achieve this same result. We can check it out for the letter W, which is far off to the right instead. And yep, it still finds its way to the middle of the screen. Super! We should make a record of this position then. Make a new variable, naming it uh, XX for this sprite only. Then set XX to the current X position. Recorded. So what happens if we duplicate that top bit of code, uh, strip off those final two lines, but instead we move to the far right, positive 9999. And of course remembering to switch the change x by to negative 1. This will move us back in to the left. Running that, and yes, as expected the w ends up nestled against the right hand edge of the screen. But wait, this is really interesting. Why? Ok, take a look at this. We originally managed to position the W sprite aligned to the left of the screen. Then we added 240 to position it offset from the middle, recording this position in the variable xx. Can you imagine where this letter would be if we added a further half screen width to it? Well, in theory, that would take it all the way to just off the right hand edge of the screen. And this is exciting because if we compare that position to where we just ended up, can you tell me what the relative distance between these two letters is? Yes, it's exactly one full width of the W costume. That means we can now calculate the width simply by taking the left position away from the right. That is, xx plus 240, subtract the new x position. And apparently this w has a width of 64. Wow, cool! Let's try a thinner letter. How about a j? Run the measuring script. And 24. Yes, that sounds right. And so, we found a way to successfully measure the width of our costumes. Our next job then is to automate the measuring of all the costumes in the font sprite. Let's begin with some initialization. When green flag clicked, 
switch costume to A. And then set size to 200. That's a good size for this pixel font. Now to ensure this all runs nice and fast, make a new custom block. Calculate letter sizes. And of course tick to run without screen refresh. We're going to need to use lists to store our font data. The first is named underscore width. I use underscore to mean it's a special list of data that is not going to change once set. Then ensure it starts empty with a delete all of underscore width. The next list is named underscore offset x. Again for this sprite only. And again we delete all from this list too. So we need to loop through all our costumes. But how do we tell Scratch how many costumes that is? Another trick then. Switch costume 2. And now the first costume number is costume 1. To ensure Scratch knows this is a number and not a name, I'll use the maths round block here. But rather than setting it to 1, put a 0 in there instead. What? Yeah, this is cool. If I run that, check out which costume it actually selected. The costume before the first costume is the last costume. It wrapped around. Cool. Costume 94. So now we know how many costumes we have. 94. Therefore, we repeat for costume number. That's 94 times. One for each costume. Perfect. Now, not forgetting we are still set to the last costume, place a next costume block as the first block within this loop. Now, as we go around, we'll progress on through all the costumes. Set Y to 0. We must be far away from the top and the bottom edges of the screen for this to work. Next up, with an if else block, drop in an equals. What is the length of, now not the costume number, but the costume name of this sprite? Ok, it's 1. Why do we want to check if the length is 1? Well, all letter costumes have to have a single letter as their name to work. A, B, C, so any costume with a name longer than one letter can be ignored. Cool. Now we get to drop in our costume measuring script from earlier. Put it in the then branch of this if. Next we need to ensure we record our costume size and offset data in the lists. So add the variable xx to the offset x list. This is the offset to bring the letter into the centre of the screen. Next we're going to add to the width list. And that's this little beauty here, the xx plus 240. Subtract the x position, giving us the calculated width of the costume. Splendid, we are nearly there guys. What about the else branch? This is here for any costume that is not a letter. In that case, we just can't ignore them as the list needs to account for every costume so that the list item numbers match with the costume numbers. So we just need to duplicate the two ads, but change them to just add blank values to our list. That will do just fine. Wow, this script has got quite long really. I hope you got it all. It's about time we gave this a run. Just scroll over to the when flag clicked hat block and drop in a call to calculate letter sizes. Awesome, here we go then. As you can see we have these two empty lists ready to be filled with values, so click the green flag. Oh yes, this is looking really good. Both lists have 94 items added to them and the figures are looking, well, from what I can tell, in the right ballpark. You'll note that costume 1 was not a real letter, so that's why it's been set to blank. And we do have the full 94 costumes. So, oh yes, finally it's time to begin building the actual text engine. Woohoo! Now we are going to need to be able to switch costumes to a letter. I'll just pick any letter. And then look up its width and offset. Well, here's the offset X list, but how do we go from costume to list item? Costume H is costume number 9, so looking in the list, item 9 gives us the offset for that letter. In that case, we can just use the costume number, yep that's 9, and squidge it into the item block here. Item 9 of offset X is indeed 263 as shown in that list. Great! And the width of the H letter… that would be 10. 
Perfect. Nothing can stop us now. Let's make a variable, txt, text, for this sprite only. We'll use this to hold the text we want to display. Set it to hello world. <laughs> I know, it's so cliche. Next, we can reuse the xx variable to hold the position of our text on the screen. Set it to zero. The y position, we can just use the set sprite y to, yeah, zero as well. So we need to loop through the letters one at a time. We'll need another variable to keep track of our progress. Name it simply i for index, for this sprout only. Did I say sprout? We're going to set i to zero before entering a repeat loop. And we repeat for the number of letters in our text variable. Length of the text variable. Right away, we can change i by one. So i changes from zero to one, ready to process our first letter. We need to switch to the letters costume. And we can get the name of that costume using the letter of block. On the right, drop in the text variable, the text we're trying to display. And we want the letter at position i. Now this is funky. If we run that script, you can see it rushing through the letters of hello world. But the letters are all over the place. But not to worry, that's what the offset list is there to fix. Set the sprite's x position to. And then we need an addition block. And the position we want to display the letter is at uh, xx, which at the moment is zero, the middle of the screen. But to account for any misalignment, we now need to add in the costumes offset x. Hold on, we have that just up here. Item costume number of offset x. If we run the script again, now we can see that all the letters are nicely appearing in one location. Well, that is much better. Can you sense victory? It's coming. I can almost taste it. At this point, we have a decision to make. Once we switch to the required letter and have it positioned, we need to leave it behind before moving on to the next letter. To do this, we have two options to create a clone or to use the pen extension to stamp it onto the pen canvas. For now, we'll use a clone. The benefits of clones are that they look much nicer for vector fonts, but also they are easier to have appear in front of everything else in your project. The downside is that they use up lots of our valuable clones, so this can be a real humdinger of a decision to make. Right, the first letter sprite is cloned, but we need to move xx to the right by the width of the current letter. Easy, change xx by the item costume number of width list. Okay, are we there? Smash that, um, script. Right, this is looking a bit messy. Shouldn't there be a little bit of space between letters? I guess we forgot to account for that. No problem, come back over to our calculate letter sizes script. Down here, where we record the width of each costume, we'll add a small amount extra to account for the spacing between letters. Use an addition block to add an extra two pixels. Click the green flag to recalculate the font sizes, and then try running our display script again. Oh man, still not quite the perfect text engine we were anticipating. I spent a lot of time looking into what the problem was, and the answer turned out to be another scratch bug, or at least a quirk. As we increase costume sizes to 200 and above, the touching blocks start to misreport their collisions, leading to our clever sprite size measurements being less accurate. As such, we will have to try adding 4 to the width instead to mitigate this issue. Run the project, and click our display script. There, and that is much more like it. Perfect spacing. Yes! Hey, what's up with this O in the middle of my hello world? That should have been a space, right? It's showing as an O, because that was the last letter before the space, and the costume didn't change. And why not? Because letter 6 is a space character. And we don't have no space character, boy! What I suggest is that we make one. I'll just repurpose this first costume one and rename it as a single space. There, yep, Scratch is fine with that too. If you don't have a costume one free like me, then just make a new costume and name it space. Doesn't have to be costume number one for this to work. However, there is another problem. How wide is an empty space character? 
Hmm. If the costume doesn't have a width, then we aren't going to get much of a space between our words. So just how wide should a space be? I seem to remember someone telling me that it should be the width of the letter O. Well, in that case, let me copy the costume of letter O and paste it up here in the space character sprite. Run the project and click that display script again. Yeah, okay, it's hard to tell if any of that worked since it was already showing an O in the place of the space before. Let me just paint it red. Yeah, there, now we can see the difference. Good. Of course, we don't want this red O to remain visible. And in fact, why are we wasting a clone on this anyhow? So to kill two birds with one stone, let's skip doing that. Drop in an if block right after switching costumes. But carefully move the change XX to outside this if. We still want to have a gap even if we don't want to display the space. The condition is not equal comparing the costume name to a space character. If the costume name is not a space, then set the X position and clone. Perfect. We don't need to recalculate the font sizes, so just hit the stop button to remove all the clones and then click the display script again. And yeah, baby, hello world. Not bad at all. If you want less space between the words, just reduce the width of that red O. And we can write any text we want, even include the current Scratch username. That will be handy. Now, you may have noticed that the letters are appearing a little slow on the screen. Well, this is something you may like, or you may need it to be super quick. Either way, let's make a new custom block to wrap this all up in. Name it Write with an input text, another label at x, an input x, and one more label y, and another input also named y. Cool. I'm going to try running without screen refresh. We can attach that define block to the top of our script. And now we just need to plug in all these inputs together. We'll set txt text to the text input, and we'll set xx to the x input and finally set the y position to the y input. Shall we test this baby out? Drop some text into the left hand input of the new right block and position it at 0, 0 for now. Finally, before we test this, we should deal with how to clear away the previous text clones. Otherwise, we'll keep writing one on top of the other and in the end run out of clones. We'll use a when I receive block with a new message named clear font letters. And all we do in here is delete this sprite. Simple. Then before we write out our new text, we broadcast clear font letters. Let me just move this over to the left, setting x to negative 100. And now to see it work, click the broadcast and write script. Boom! That was lightning fast. Just what I hoped. A little more text then. Lower down the page. No problem at all. Well, that's awesome. And I still have loads more to share with you, but this video is getting super long. So I'm going to have to split it into two. If you want to try different font sizes, then no problem. Just remember, you may need to play around with how much you add to the width to get the letter spacing right. Also, if you fancy switching out the create clone block for a pen stamp block, then that will also work fine too. You just need to remember to erase all instead of deleting clones to clear the screen. Anyhow, I'm rushing to the end now. I do hope you've had fun watching me spend countless hours cutting out letters, but the end results are going to be so worth it. I can't wait to see what you guys have made with this. Don't forget to submit your projects to the studio linked in the description under the video. The next episode will stretch what we've done here to amazing new heights with word wrapping, dialogues for my RPG and more. So if you haven't already subscribed to this channel so as not to miss my next exciting episode. Oh yeah, and please smash the like button too so that more people get to enjoy the video. That's how it works in YouTube land and I appreciate it. So thanks for watching, have a great week ahead and scratch on guys. <laughs> <laughs>